Hi, I'm Justin. Also, I hate the way my voice sounds, so if you can like do whatever Photoshop does to voices, make me sound awesome. And this is my lovely friend. The beauty in the eyes of the beholder. And it's just about getting into the seat of being the beholder. Haley. I don't think you have to be particularly perceptive. I just think you have to look up. This podcast is mostly just her telling me stories. If you expose yourself to the possibility that this might be really awkward, there, there could be something just really cool on the other side of it. She thinks that her life and way of looking at things are... Oh, I thought I was kind of waiting on you. I thought you were getting your stuff ready. You're waiting on me? Pretty normal. You got to edit out all the misinformation about the Amish. Maybe you can relate. I would like a chance to re-sing the Amish paradise. <laughs> if you want lighthearted stories... All right, you want to talk about goats? ...and stream of consciousness... I just woke up and needed some friends, and so I bought them. Then you're going to like the Sunny Side Up podcast. Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up. So, if you're at all like me, you may feel that you're living in a world that can be a bit overwhelming and confusing at times. I'm also a huge fan of podcasts, documentaries, docudrama stories, and of just information in general. Between all of that and the social media and news, sometimes our brains can feel like they're on overload. Haley and I hope that this podcast can be something of an anecdote to all of that, like little jello shots of joy and distraction. None of it is too serious or really too informative. Mostly it's just two friends who have conversational chemistry talking about whatever enters the minds of relatively ADHD people. We hope you enjoy. What's the, by the way, what is that idea of like whatever you start thinking about and focusing on, you start seeing? Oh, it's like the- There's a word for that because it is a true thing. uh, It's like laws of attraction or something. (laughs) Like you learn a new vocabulary word and the next day you hear it three times. It's everywhere. Okay. So in that world- uh, giving a very generous nod to Bigfoot, which did we cover Bigfoot early, in any of our earlier podcasts? We Well, we have talked about it, but it was a draggy conversation. You probably cut it. Like, uh, yeah, we were both, I I we were both there, yeah. on the downhill slope. Well, okay. So in case this is like rehashed hash browns, and it might be. Big fan of those. Big fan. Yeah. Squirt some ketchup on them. I mean, go to Awful House and get your fill. I love, that's one of the reasons I love Awful House is because, yeah, I don't eat their offals. I eat their hash browns. But anyways, so um, you introduced me to Bigfoot. What? I I did? Okay. Now I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad I did that for you. But how? Cult. Cult. I just keep having to remind myself. Hold on. And I need, now I, now I need to put, yeah, I need to put some (laughs) clarification brackets around this. No, please don't take me down. I need this. No, no, no. I'm going to, I will, I will take you down a peg to then lift you up three. Okay. Fair? That sounds good. Okay. What a journey. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I was aware of Bigfoot as a concept. I had never gone to a Bigfoot museum. I'd never looked at a 24 inch Bigfoot turd. Okay. Until you. Well, now, we on. did that together. So to be fair, like that was new to me also. Well, all I did was tell you where to turn oh, the car. Right. Your passion <laughs> about Bigfoot opened me up to the world of like I didn't I don't think I fully realized that there were really people who really believed oh, in yeah. it. Oh yeah. If we're being yeah. fair, all of this credit goes to that guy at the front of the expedition yes. Bigfoot who was so He was legit. Um he like the conviction with which he explained the metatarsal situation. Right. I think he believes in Bigfoots like I believe in Jesus. Like you're probably not going to talk me out of Jesus and you're not talking to him out of Bigfoot. And you know, there you go. I don't want to talk him out of Bigfoot. I don't either. Yeah. That's a beautiful like, belief. I kind of want to climb up there and sit with him in the Bigfootedness. Yeah. Maybe just not to the same degree. Would you, if if Bigfoot dressed up as Santa, would you climb up in Bigfoot's lap? Well, gosh, no. Because okay. Bigfoot clearly doesn't want people in his no, lap. But I'm saying, like, if this was like a, a team. It's also a little weird that we climb into Santa's lap. Like, think of the things that we teach our children <laughs> About strangers and stranger danger and personal space Fair and enough. having limits, and yet we're telling them climb in this man's lap, and if hey, you are nice to him, he'll give you treats. I hope it's got sexual predator written all over th- it. It is. Where did this tradition come from? Okay, but let me tell you something. You want to hear callback to earlier upsides of living in a cult? We disdained Santa. Okay, so Santa 
was, and Christmas it, Santa and Easter was, and all other holidays, just to be fair. But we did not like Santa. Sense. Which makes a lot of sense whenever – oh, like to any Santa believers who might yeah, hear sorry. this. Oh, yeah. Do not let your children oh, – But gosh, if you – like the stories episode. are fun, it adds a little bit of magic and it's fun. But right. when you step back and look at it, you're like, we're saying there's a guy watching you all year long, keeping yeah. notes and deciding what you do and don't deserve and then breaking into your house to give it to you. And we're taking our children to set them in the laps of a stranger – in the lap, singular, of a stranger mm. – and telling them that if they're if they're good and do yeah, what he yeah. what pleases him, then right, they might right. get a treat, and that's so creepy. Yeah, and a little manipulative. Oh, so much. Yeah. By the way, the real Saint Nick guy was an actual gem. Oh, Such sure. A beautiful, yeah, beautiful it name. always starts in a good place, yeah. and then we destroy. Or Chris, it. maybe it was, yeah, whatever. I remember hearing about the real guy. I was like, he actually. By the way, he was anti. I think he was actually anti sex trafficking or children enslavement or some issue that like t- today is like the biggest no die ever but like in his day was a kind of like ah who cares or no one really cared or thought about it and he was really like he fought it saint nicholas or was either saint nicholas or chris whatever whoever that it's based on belschnickel belschnickel i don't know <laughs> um anyways when we went to the museum and you really brought me into the fold with the possibilities of all that uh, a Bigfoot could be in my life. That was within like a couple of weeks or a week later. I saw the print in my yard. I've been living on this acreage before and since. I've never seen either, it was either a bear print or it was Bigfoot, but I saw that print. And it, isn't that weird? That's really coincidental. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, it's, the, it's, it's like this laws of attraction thing or whatever that word is. It's almost like um, the chronology of time is sometimes glitchy. Mm hmm. And this is why we, you know we're living in a simulation. Yeah, so much. Right. So much. Like, this week, I uh, I text my husband, like, hey, what about, th- do you know this person? Because I think they have some experience as a handyman. And he's like, yeah, I do. Let me kind of look into it, and I'll get back to you. A couple hours later, he walks inside, and he's like, did you call that guy? And I was like, no, I just asked you to call that guy. And he's like, well, I was just wondering because he's in our backyard right now. Like oh my he was at the shop with a, with a brother-in-law working on something. He just happened to drive up, but it's like, that's weird. Somebody we've never met, never spoken his name. I would mention it. And then a few hours later he he's appears. There. Yeah. So weird. And that's why I just walk around saying things like lots of money in my <laughs> bank account. Yeah. Just speaking good things. I'm yeah, manifesting yeah. it. Yeah, I am yeah. manifesting. You're manifesting it. Yeah. <laughs> The, manifesting the handyman in the backyard, manifesting the Bigfoot <laughs> paw print in your yard. Right. Is it a paw print? Is it a hand print? Uh, yeah, unclear. Uh, and I'm sure those who are Bigfoot enthusiasts will uh, clear that Have right an opinion, us. yeah. Um, did you go through, speaking of like we're all in a simulation uh, or in the matri- Matrix or something, um, have you – okay, I clearly remember – what was the movie? You was clearly it, remember what was the movie? Was Shaz- <laughs> it was a Shazam? Who is the, who is the uh, comedian? I got it. This is the way it takes my brain like eight thousand years to get to place once ago. It was a funny. Sh- bo- Sh- Shazam was a basketball player, and he was like a genie. The genie guy. Okay. It wasn't Shazam. Shazam was Shaq, but there was the one that was very similar. It was Charles Barkley. No, no, no. He was a comedian. Oh. And he played in a movie about being a genie. And it was called, like, Kazam or Shazam. I don't remember which. I don't know. And that movie never existed, except tons of us, like myself. I saw it on a, on a video store shelf um, when I was a kid. When I, no, when I was a teenager. Are I you saw- sure it wasn't Shaquille O'Neal? I'm I'm positive. I remember because he because this guy was he was the funny comedian. He had the big earring in his ear. He he was the guy who played with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. Let's see pop culture things. No, I know, I know. I and then I can't. Uh, here, I'll take two seconds, which uh, I can edit this part right out. Um, let me look up his name real quick. Um, Sinbad. Never mind. I don't even need to do it. Sinbad. Sinbad. Was he a basketball player? No, he's a comedian. I've said it five times. Um, <laughs> He was a comedian, and he did a movie called Shazam or Kazam or something like that. And uh, anyways, now um, 
no one can find that movie. It never existed. And he says it never was never made. And Wait. yet there's tens of thousands of us who remember the My movie. My brother watched that movie. Right. It doesn't he exist. He denies that it existed? No. The world, like you can't find it. There's no copies of it. It literally never existed. The closest that what 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 the people that want us to um, you know that are that are running the the, the uh, simulation what they want us to think is there really was another one that Shaq did that was called Kazam or Shazam or whatever it was that was not similar but kind of around the same time um, or something like that and I guess they they're like oh one large black man looks like another no I know what Sinbad looked like. But anyways, and then there's the Berenstein Bears thing. You've, you you know that one? No, I don't. But the I Berenstein was just, Bears versus Berenstein Bears. I, I just wait. I'm still hung up on the fact that I know that that movie existed. My yes, brothers we, watched it. No, it doesn't. Go go look hard. It does not exist. Like that is the that is the strongest, and it's called the something effect. Have you heard? It? What is that term called? It's called the. Oh, this podcast is not going to work if I can't think of stuff. It's called the something effect. Is it just because we get him confused with the Shaquille O'Neal That's what they Kazam? Claim. That's... No, but I remember it was Sinbad. Because Sinbad was so distinct. He was but funny. But he was a sailor. And so are we just getting Sinbad the sailor mixed up with Shaquille O'Neal as Kazam? And how would we all be making this no, same mistake? No, no. We, we remember it right. I don't know why it doesn't exist. That's it's It's called the something effect. What is it called when something you remember exists or doesn't exist? The Mandela effect? The Mandela effect. Jeep. Yeah, I have to edit. This is my brain. It's my struggle. You don't yeah, have the to. Mandela effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they call it the Mandela effect. And it was like when I was when I was being uh, – when I was a kid, it was the Bernstein Bears, and I read the Bernstein Bears, and now, without a doubt, it is the Bernstein Bears. It changed somewhere. Is it still on TV? I have no idea. We weren't allowed to read, or watch TV, but I, I could go to the library and get the Bernstein Bears, and I read the Bernstein Bears, and now there's an extra E in there, and it's the Bernstein Bears. Mm-hmm. I have a book from like 1982 that was taken from a library and never returned. It won't matter. I didn't do it, but I could see. They say, according to this great Mandela effect theory, it when it when the Matrix switched, all of the uh, everything. Sw- yeah. Yeah. Okay. We always pronounced it Berenstein. Did you? Uh, did, see, but we're South Mississippi, and we just say so true. many things wrong. Yeah. Well, let's go back to to Mr. Sinbad. I mean, you you probably you should ask your brothers about this. They probably have memories of memories of watching Sinbad, the comedian, do the funny show about being a genie in a bottle. It never happened. I just gotta ask them. Yeah, like I'm texting them right now. Okay, which one? Could, Kazam was the Shaquille O'Neal movie, right? Might have been. And I, I, let me look up. Um, hold on. Okay, Google. Which movie did Sinbad play a genie? Shazam. According to LX, do you remember the 90s movie Shazam? That stars the comedian Sinbad as a genie who appears to a pair of kids to help them deal with a tragic time? And that movie never existed. There's the picture of it and everything. That's Sinbad. Right. That's not a real movie. It doesn't exist. What is the premise of Kazam? Who knows? I never saw it. Is it a genie that appears to kids to help them? Like, have we truly just gotten black actors mixed up because we're so <laughs> so racist or whatever? Like, yeah. actors frequently mentioned on the web. Okay. What is the premise of the movie Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal? According to IMDb, a troubled kid inadvertently releases a genie who must grant him any three wishes he requests. And that's what they say happened, is, no, no, you're wrong. The whole time it was Kazam. But it's like, yeah, it's a strange thing. I, this is new to me, and it's fascinating, because I right. I would have given a book report yeah. on that yeah. exp- on that movie, yeah. and now you're saying it doesn't exist. And it I'm like, could, exist. but how... How can an entire community be taken in by the Mandela effect on the same point of error? Well, this That's is so why strange. this is like community the, transmission <laughs> of of false information. Yeah, I mean, this is like the thing with when a UFO uh, lands or whatever, and there's like thousands or hundreds of people who will swear that X, Y, and Z happened, but like all the the people that are in uh, in charge are like, no, that didn't happen. It's not real. Although, 
Got to give kudos to Trump. Got to give kudos where kudos are due. He did declassify the idea that, yes, we have been chasing uh, UAPs. Um, Unidentified w- aerial phenomenon. Is mm-hmm. that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those have been really fun to um, to kind of listen to. Yeah. Did- what have you been learning about them? Um, nothing that I didn't already know because I spent time in the obscure sections of the library as a kid. I was a ton of fun at parties. But, no, I was reading all of those I was reading all of those <laughs> firsthand accounts of guys from the Mississippi Gulf Coast who get taken into a spaceship yeah. and have their extremities probed and yeah. things like that. So, but also growing up in that like ultra religious environment, the, there was this uh, theory developed that the stories about aliens are really just demons trying to distract mm. us from our mission here on Earth. You know, so Fair enough. they um, would try to draw the parallels between demonic spirits and aliens probing drunk guys from the Mississippi <laughs> Gulf Coast. Right. And I'm like, ah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, and then it, we uh, well, part of the part of the thing is the aliens they just need better representation. Yeah, yeah. And their marketing is Alabama poor here on and Earth. Mississippi. Or anybody from Florida, really, like, these are not good poster children for, like, being taken seriously. Like, you need, like, a Harvard academic who was scooped up from the courtyard. That's true. Right? Like, something like that. Please, please get the right specimens so that you would have a better idea of what you're dealing with here on Earth. Or better yet, keep getting those and you're less likely to want to come back and take (laughs) the rest of it. I don't know. I just love the movies that we put out that show the the world earth um defeating all of our yes. intergalactic <laughs> adversaries it's like absolutely uh, yeah it's good to have that level of confidence i suppose I like <laughs> well i like um my son my son micah who is in the marines um and uh doesn't Probably, you know, it's not like he knows anything about anything necessarily, but he's around. So, okay, so he is. Po- it like, sounds like you're fixing to tell me some secrets, and I want to hear them. No, all. no, no, no. There's no secrets to be told. But th- th- here's the thing. Here's the thing. He is stationed at Quantico, Excellent. which is a massive, like, piece of federal property that the FBI operates out of. It's where they tr- the the Marines train their candidate other officer candidates like if you're going to become an officer in the marine corps you're going to go to quantico it's where that school is it's um it's boot camp for for candidates that want to become officers any which way also on this property he hasn't said a lot about it but he's told me that there's this like it is truly like the um super top secret black ops section of this property and there's a row that leads down it where very large weird looking vehicles will go down and he said, it's so top secret that all he knows is that even Marines, they, they have no idea what's happening down this road, in those buildings, in the woods. Like, whatever it is. And he said, I remember he told me actually one story of this one kid who legitimately got separated during maneuvers when they were running around in the woods doing, you know, war games and stuff. Got separated and wandered onto the road and a uh, they have security that are like paramilitary looking and that almost killed this kid because you're literally it's a shoot on sight and they're allowed to they could have killed this guy they could have killed this kid but they could tell he was there by accident and had mercy right right, right. Wow. had mercy on him and brought him back anyways okay so he's he's talking about just like the way the, the the types of vehicles and the machinery that drives back they're just from like what you can see driving past you, you already know. Like whatever they're doing back there, it's mind blowing. Okay. So okay, it's Paint. not just a Shriners meeting, a bunch of old <laughs> right. guys sitting back there playing cards, Eating and spaghettios, <laughs> and like throwing darts, <laughs> and, yeah. and pretending like it's top secret. <laughs> right. And you just shoot like a, a wayward marine once every twenty years to keep the mystique up. But um, anyways, no. So um, his theory is when I told him, I was like, you know, when the when Trumpy boy. Um, declassified, like, all this aerial um, footage from, like, you know, obviously the United States has the best Air Force in the world. We have all the best technology. And these guys are saying, we don't know what's happening with these craft. These craft are, like, flying at, like, four to 5,000 miles an hour, stopping at a dime, going into the water. I mean, just doing – it's it's nuts. It's not, it's not right. possible. Um, and, like, we're now, like, okay, we've opened it up to the possibility – 
that it might be aliens. His comeback, which I thought was pretty brilliant, was, oh, yeah, of course. He's like, what's really happening is some teeny sliver of the government where no, like, the left hand does not know what the right hand's doing, has invented these, this craft, and they're out there. We have just enough sophistication to spot them. We don't know what to do with them. We don't know how to deal with it, but because it's such cutting edge te- technology. And he's like many of the high ranking military folks, when you ask them, is this our stuff? They're legitimately saying no. And I have like super sure. high clearance, clearance, but because there's only like 50 people on this crazy project in the whole world and they're all here, um, then. Um, Basically, his thing was letting it be aliens was such a great out. Like, oh, it, yes, it's aliens. So I his like thing, that. right? So his thing was like coming out with it being aliens. It's like, all right, there's two. We're getting spotted too often now. We've got this video evidence. Let's just give them what they've always wanted. They've always wanted the United States to admit, yes, there's aliens, and now we can just keep covering this top secret program. Of UAPs. Anyways, I thought it was pretty fascinating. So I will go along thing. with it, actually. I know, I'm kind of there. Like, and also, I mean, wow, that would be super exciting if our technology was that advanced. I know. Because did you watch? You didn't. You grew up in a cult. <laughs> ah. I love how you had to, like, smack your forehead <laughs> as you said that. <laughs> I, you every time I start saying, did you watch Flight of the Navigator as a kid? No. And um, this kid finds, like, a spacecraft in his backyard, and he and this little alien thing kind of get to fly around on it. And this this... Wow. I would have to rewatch it to to get the details, but it was seemed like it was like a clamshell mm. shaped, silvery, yeah. and it was reverse direction at the Ooh. you know like yeah, all, yeah. The, all the all things, the cool stuff. all the cool stuff that we don't currently have the technology to do that we know of. So I'd like to think that sure, yeah, like it came from somewhere. It it's came from root, somewhere. yeah, and it's not aliens. I would much rather imagine that we we did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it'd be nice to be proud of something like that. Right, yeah. Yeah, why not? Hello, lovely friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And it would mean the world if you would tell other people about this podcast and maybe even spam your social media accounts with just how much you're enjoying it. If you are, of course. Also, commenting and rating us on whatever platform you're downloading or streaming from is incredibly helpful to a little startup podcast like this one. On the other hand, if you are dissatisfied with your listening experience, please leave all of that hate on someone else's podcast, just maybe to confuse them a little bit, right? But most of all, we hope you keep looking up and looking for the sunny side of life.